June was a really bad month for North Atlantic right whales. Of the remaining 411 individuals, six died. That's almost one and a half percent of the entire population gone in a month, which is kind of alarming and mostly our fault. If we can't fix what we're breaking, we're looking at the functional extinction of these whales in just a few years and their total disappearance not long after. And that would make them the first whale to go extinct as a result of commercial whaling. North Atlantic right whales are already one of the most endangered whale species in the world. That's because they used to be incredibly popular with commercial whalers, hence the name. They were considered the right whales to target, so they were hunted to near extinction. But then governments stepped in to protect them and things started to look up. In fact, in the early part of the century, their numbers seemed to be climbing. But that all changed around 2010, and the reason why is pretty clear. Research published last month found that we've lost an average of 5.3 whales per year since 2009. And that's not counting 2019 and June's unusual mortality event. While researchers can't always tell the cause of death, most of the documented cases have been caused by humans. The whales were either hit by boats or caught in fishing lines. And of course, we'd like to see less whales die by our hands. But accidents do happen, so it's important to have an idea of how many human-caused deaths a population can withstand and still be sustainable. That's a value called the Potential Biological Removal, or PBR. And researchers have calculated it for North Atlantic right whales, taking into account things like how many healthy whales are still around, their reproductive habits, and the availability of their prey. The problem is that number is estimated to be 0.9 whales a year. So in the last decade or so, we've killed more than five times that number. And there's still a lot we don't know, like how many of them die outside of monitored areas, or how many already have human-induced injuries that will lead to their death later on. For instance, there was one female that died 14 years after being scarred by a propeller because her scars were reopened by pregnancy and became infected. Plus, the numbers are a bit skewed because we're more likely to find carcasses that have been struck by ships. Those whales tend to be a little bulkier, so they float. The whales that get tangled in fishing lines tend to sink, so their bodies are never found. And not only are the whales dying too often, they're just not replacing their numbers. There's only 90 to 100 adult females out there right now. And last year, they gave birth to seven new calves, and that was considered a good year. Researchers think they're struggling to reproduce because our changing climate is messing with their usual feeding and pupping grounds, making conditions less favorable for the whale moms. So basically, we've got a small population of whales that aren't making babies, and we're not so slowly killing them off. Both the US and Canada have have implemented new laws in recent years to try to lower the number of human-caused deaths. And some have helped, but clearly there's a lot more work to do. Because ultimately, if we can't stop these losses from happening, it won't be long before these animals disappear entirely. And other whales similarly decimated by hunting will probably suffer the same fate. Now, in other news, and really there's no good way to make this transition, Research published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences this week showed us how bed bugs keep themselves from getting sexually transmitted infections. And the findings might just help us keep these pests from infiltrating our bedrooms. Now, these STIs aren't like insect chlamydia. We're talking about infections that result from how these bugs have sex. Bed bugs reproduce through traumatic insemination. The male literally stabs his reproductive organ through the female's abdomen and deposits sperm into her body. And this process can happen every week if the female has access to a blood meal. You see, males generally target well-fed females because they usually lay the most eggs. But sort of luckily, I guess, female bed bugs are able to buff up their immune systems right before mating. And what the researchers wanted to figure out was what triggers them to do this. It turns out it wasn't what they expected. They thought the females might learn to ramp up their immune defenses after repeated stabbings, but the team took two groups of adult virgin female bed bugs and fed them as much as they wanted once a week for three weeks. And in the end, the ones stabbed by a glass needle to mimic traumatic insemination didn't have a greater immune response. Instead, every bug beefed up their immune system after eating. That suggested the injuries the females receive aren't the driving factor. Instead, the bugs just have this built-in immune response to food. But the researchers still wondered if it was the act of eating itself or something else. So they took immature bed bugs and fed some of them on a consistent weekly schedule, and the others were fed at five, seven, and nine day intervals. So their meals were inconsistent, but averaged out to the same once per week frequency. Intriguingly, the group that ate consistently every week ramped up their immune system way more after eating than the group with the varied eating schedule. And this made a big difference when they stabbed the bugs with bacteria-coated glass needles to mimic the wounds inflicted by male bugs. 
those that were on a predictable feeding schedule had better survival rates. So it's not the food itself or a full belly, but the animals anticipating that they'll get food that triggers their immunological preparation for mating. And that knowledge could help scientists find better pest control strategies. For example, they might be able to target female bed bugs when they're most vulnerable, or uncover ways to make the bugs more prone to infection. And the researchers think that other insects might regulate their immune systems in similar ways. So the more scientists learn about bed bugs, the better equipped they may be to fight all sorts of pests. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow News, and thanks especially to our longest running president of space, S.R. Foxley. We really appreciate your continued support. It makes a huge difference to us here. And so does the support of all of our patrons. If you want to join our Patreon community, you can get all kinds of exclusive rewards while supporting this free educational YouTube channel. You can find out more at patreon.com slash scishow.